Hello, I'm Adrian Gonzalez, President of Adonant SEM, and it's great to be back as your host for this October 22 edition of Transporting Journal. Here we are in the final quarter of 2022, a year that has turned out to be, from a supply chain logistics perspective, as challenging and volatile as the previous two. We began the year dealing with the new COVID variant, Omicron, and the outbreak of war between Russia and Ukraine. Sadly, the war continues today, bringing ongoing risk and uncertainty to supply chains and everything else in the world. And the economic environment today is much weaker than it was at the beginning of the year, with slowing economic growth and record inflation around the globe. This is the world that supply chain logistics professionals find themselves in today. And this is the time of year when they start putting together their strategies and budgets for the coming year. When they start asking a very basic question, what do you think is going to happen next year? The honest truth is that nobody really knows for sure. And this is especially true when it comes to the transportation market. If we have learned anything from the past two years, it is to expect the unexpected. This does not mean, however, that you should just take a ignorance is bliss approach and just carry on as you were. The first step in dealing with uncertainty is to stay informed of what's happening in the world with regulations, the economy, geopolitical activities, transportation and labor markets, the competitive landscape, emerging technologies, and so on. The good news is that we have greater access to real-time data and information today than ever before, from a variety of different sources, including newspapers, blogs, newsletters, social media, podcasts, government agencies, and technology companies. Find the sources that you consider the most informative and that you trust the most, and follow or subscribe to them. What's going to happen next year? Here is one outlook from the World Trade Organization published on October 5th. Quote, World trade is expected to remain subdued in 2023 as multiple shocks weigh on the global economy. WTO economists now predict global merchandise trade volumes will increase only 1% in 2023, down sharply from the previous estimate of 3.4%. End quote. The Russia-Ukraine war, monetary policy tightening, and continued COVID-19 outbreaks, particularly in China, are among the headwinds. Meanwhile, as reported by CNBC on October 11th, the International Monetary Fund predicts global growth will slow to 2.7% next year, a decrease of 0.2 percentage points from its July forecast. In a speech at Georgetown University in early, early October, IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva said, quote, we are experiencing a fundamental shift in the global economy from a world of relative predictability to a world of more fragility, greater uncertainty, higher economic volatility, geopolitical confrontations, and more frequent and devastating natural disasters, end quote. Looking at Germany, for example, a group of leading economic institutes lowered their growth forecast for 2023. According to a press release issued on September 29th by one of the institutes, the Halle Institute for Economic Research, they said, quote, for the coming year, the economic institutes are lowering their forecast from 3.1% to negative 0.4%. This revision mainly reflects the extent of the energy crisis. The inflation rate is also expected to increase further over the coming months. The average annual inflation rate for 2023 should climb to 8.8%, slightly higher than the current year's figure of 8.4%. Only in 2024 will the 2% mark be gradually reached again." End quote. This slowdown in global trade growth is already being felt in ocean shipping. A growing number of scheduled sailings from Asia to the United States, as well as from Asia to Europe, are being canceled. Also, as Transporium presented at its Ocean Annual Conference earlier this month, China to North Europe spot rates are below contract rates for the first time in two years, and spot rates from China to North America West Coast ports are down 85% from peak, while contract rates, as assessed by Transporium Market Intelligence, are currently down 20%. Transporian's analysts summarize the situation this way, quote, while contract rates on all ex-China trades are trending downward, the battle to establish the rate level for the coming tender season is still ongoing and we will likely see further downward corrections, end quote. In addition to slowing economic growth and high inflation, we're also seeing growing labor unrest around the world. Here in the United States, for example, we recently averted a rail strike, at least for now, after a tentative deal was reached between the railroads and the unions representing 110,000 workers. On the port side, negotiations continue between the ILWU and the Pacific Maritime Association, but it hasn't been a smooth process, so the risk of a labor strike at the West Coast ports remains. Meanwhile, as reported by Lorianne Larocco at CNBC, quote, dock workers at Felixstowe, the largest port in the UK, conducted an eight-day strike starting at the end of September in protest over their wages and inflation, 
overlapping with an ongoing strike at the Port of Liverpool. Together, the two port strikes threaten imports and exports across industries during a critical ramp up in the holiday shipping season, end quote. How are these strikes impacting supply chains? Andreas Braun, Europe, Middle East, and Africa Ocean Product Director at Crane Worldwide Logistics, told CNBC that, quote, unlike the first strike in August, where there was sufficient preparation time to deviate to alternative ports, ocean lines and shippers will now have to deviate from the ports again to Hamburg and Rotterdam, increasing the travel time to the new port by 12 to 14 days. Then you have an additional five days of ground or rail transport, end quote. On top of all this, beginning October 10th through December 31st, 2022, companies from all EU countries, Norway, Ukraine, and the UK will no longer be able to transport goods through Russia by road, as reported by Dezen, Shira, and Associates. Goods from foreign trucks will be reloaded or a semi-trailer will be hooked up to Russian and Belarusian vehicles at the customs terminal complexes at various border crossings. According to the briefing, quote, despite sanctions, Thousands of trucks from Europe cross into Russia every day, although queues have reached back for tens of kilometers and waiting times have been reaching anywhere from three to ten days. This new regulation will further increase difficulties as well as create logistical issues with increased time in matching up European vehicles with Russian trucks and the ongoing transfer of containers between them." End quote. So as you can see, the outlook for the rest of 2022 and the coming year with regards to the economy and global trade is overwhelmingly pessimistic. What does this mean for the transportation market in the coming year? Again, it's impossible to predict with high certainty, but the first step is to look at the data we have and how things are trending. Let's start by looking at a new index transport and introduced called the EU Cost Index that shows the evolution of costs for trucking carriers across the 70 biggest lanes in Europe. It aggregates data into five clusters, which represent the five biggest cost factors for carriers, driver costs, fuel and AdBlue, vehicle, toll, and services and sums it up into a single index via total cost of ownership calculation model. I won't go into all the details behind the model, but for the purposes of this discussion, it's important to know that the index has a baseline of 100, which represents the average cost seen in the last two quarters of 2019. This means that values larger than the baseline represent an increase in cost. For example, an index of 120 means that the costs are now 20% higher than in 2019. For Q3 2022, the cost index was 120.08, significantly higher than the 105.8 reading in Q3 2021. What cost factor has increased the most over the past year? You guessed it, fuel costs. In Q3 2021, fuel and ABU costs accounted for 26.5% of total carrier costs. Today, it accounts for 31.5%. The ongoing war in Ukraine, coupled with the announcement by OPEC Plus on October 5th that it will cut oil production by 2 million barrels per day, will certainly keep fuel prices elevated for the foreseeable future. The cost index is forecasted to decrease slightly to 120.01 in Q4 2022, but then increase again to 120.31 in Q1 2023 and 121 in Q2 2023. Why is tracking and analyzing the costs incurred by trucking carriers important? Well, if carrier costs go up, this puts upward pressure on both spot and contract rates. And if carriers aren't able to increase rates quickly enough to cover these increased costs and remain profitable, they will ultimately go out of business thus reducing available capacity in the market. Speaking of capacity, looking at the capacity index on Transport and Insights on the morning of this recording, the index was 93.3 in August 2022, compared to 90.2 in August 2021. A reading under 100 indicates a capacity-constrained environment. So year over year, the index has increased 3.4%, meaning that although the index remains below 100, capacity was a little less constrained this past August compared to August 2021. Also, from January through May of this year, capacity had been tightening each month on a year-over-year -year basis, with the index decreasing monthly between 2% and 6% compared to 2021. But from June through August, capacity started loosening a little bit each month on a year-over-year -year basis, with the index increasing monthly between 1% and 4% compared to 2021. Perhaps the tightening of capacity over the first five months of the year was due to a combination of better economic conditions at the time, the initial impact from the war in Ukraine on driver availability, and the negative effects on capacity from further implementation of the EU mobility package, which began in February 2022. Now that those factors are baked in the market more and economic conditions are deteriorating, will the loosening of capacity continue in the months ahead? It's hard to say, especially with the busy holiday season upon us, but overall market conditions suggest capacity is more likely to open up in the months ahead, even if only a little bit, than getting tighter. 
Meanwhile, if we look at the spot price index, which tracks the spot rate across 70 major lanes in Europe and weighs each lane according to its transport performance, it was 138.72 in September 2022, a 13.3 increase from September 2021. However, from June through September 2022, the index decreased 4.2%, which aligns with the softening of capacity I discussed earlier. And the contract price index, which tracks the contract rate across the same 70 major European lanes, was 123.33 in September 2022, a 19.2% increase from September 2021. However, it's interesting to note that from January through May 2022, the index increased 9.5%, but from June through September, it only increased 1.3%. So maybe this is the beginning of contract rates leveling off. So let's go back to the question, what is going to happen next year in transportation? I understand why transportation professionals ask that question, but a better question to ask is, do we have what we need to respond quickly, intelligently, and effectively to whatever happens down the road? Among the things you will need are a transportation management system, including procurement capabilities, real-time visibility to market rates and capacity, access to a large network of carriers, including a core set of strategic partners, and knowledgeable and experienced people. Now, this is not a complete list, but it's a good start to help you manage your transportation operations in a more intelligent, responsive, and efficient way. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you for watching this edition of Transpiring Journal. I wish you all a happy and healthy days ahead.